Storytime grown-ups, how are you doing? All right, well, if you haven't watched one of these before, my name is Miss Lisa, and I get to do the story times at Worthington Park normally, but right now, during this unexpected and unprecedented time, we are bringing some of our ideas that we would be doing here at the library to you at home. I hope that some of these are really nice and easy for you to be able to do, and I hope that they help you supplement whatever your toddler or preschooler or even young um, elementary schooler are working on. All right, so this week we're talking all about colors, which is a super fun theme. Normally, I tend to like really bright colors, and I love getting to do it in the middle of winter when everything's feeling a little bit blah. I know, we've had lots of white, haven't we? Lots of white snow out there, now turning into brown and gray. Yep. All right. Well, we have a few things that I thought we could talk about that would be fun ideas. The first one is to brighten up that light coming in. You can make some window art that you would hang in the window and it would catch the light. So you can do things like if you have any of those kits hanging around that are sun catchers, you could do those. You can also use just tissue paper. If you have any contact paper, you can stick it into there. If you don't have any contact paper, but you do maybe have an empty used bag, you could tape or glue it onto the bag, and that would be a fun way to do it too. Um, but anytime you use tissue paper, it's really nice because it catches the light and it really makes it nice and bright and cheerful. Um, if you are working with a little one, you can use only primary colors and see what happens when, say, they put, you know, a, a blue next to a yellow and the light shines through. Um, actually, it looks more it's hard to tell because I don't have a great light coming behind. But um, you could talk about color mixing and color blending that way. Um, or you can just let them practice. Anytime we're practicing ripping things up or cutting it into small pieces, when we're allowed to, um, it really helps benefit those pincer grip, those fine motor skills that I'm so obsessed with. So if you are ripping, we're using those muscles. If you're cutting, using those muscles. So anytime you can do items like that, that seem like it's just for fun and just for play, it really helps um, your child that you're working with um, develop those skills that they're going to need for kindergarten and on into elementary. Anytime we do those skills and build those muscles, we're working on our writing skills later on. So we don't have to sit and practice writing lines or practice writing letters. Uh, that is important. But it's not necessarily age appropriate depending on how old your kid is. But ripping paper, super age appropriate. Hey, if any of my little friends are watching right now, any of my kiddos, uh, don't rip paper unless you have permission to rip that paper. Deal? And we only use scissors on paper with permission. That's right. Okay. Um, let's see. I also had a couple other ideas that you can sort something at your house by color. So you could try to put all the things that are reds and pinks into one pile, all the things that are yellows into one pile, and you could do greens and you could do all of the colors. Um, it's fun to do with Duplos or Legos, whatever you like to build with. It's also fun to do with pom-poms or art supplies that you might have laying around. If you're using something smaller, you'll never guess what I want you to use. Yeah, try to incorporate tweezers as much as you can. Even if we're just picking up a pom-pom with these muscles, that is still super beneficial. Hand-eye coordination, that helps benefit. Um, it helps with our pincer grip. But if we are adding the extra tricky tweezer motion, uh, that really helps build those muscles. Honestly, these tweezers are hard even for my grown-up hands. Um, but there are some more kid-friendly ones that you can find. I like these because they're almost invincible. I have had a few friends break them, but they are almost invincible. All right, so... That is the next idea I had was the color sorting. Another idea is a rice hunt. So if you have some rice laying around that maybe has gone a little past date and you don't want to eat it, um, this is a great use for that. I like to mix it with a little bit of food coloring and vinegar. So if you put some rice, a couple drops of food coloring mixed with vinegar into a container that has a really solid locking lid and you give it a good shake 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 your kid can totally do that part it's lots of fun and it makes an obnoxious amount of noise uh, you could shake 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 it get the color mixed all through it and then you have to you do have to set it out to let it dry for a minute um, but once it's dry it makes for fantastic rice hunts if you don't want to color the rice and you just want to put some in or if you have other sensory things that you like to put in a bin you are that works great 
Um, if you are doing maybe your color sorting and your rice hunt all together, you can put the pom-poms in with the rice, have them hunt for them, use the tweezers to pull it out, and then maybe you have a muffin tin or some way that they sort the items. So uh, hopefully you can see how that all works together. And one of my favorite things about sensory bins and color sorting is once you get them started, you can go do other things. Those are my favorite kinds of projects. I absolutely want to spend a little bit of time with my kid. I want to model how to do things. I want to be modeling, you know, how to use the pin, the tweezers properly, how we want to sort them. But once they're going or after that first day, you can go do other things. I love those things. Okay. All right, so that's our rice hunt. Another idea I had was making sensory bottles. This is another one where after you make them, the kids can play with them over and over and over again. Um, and that initial time investment pays off. Um, so I like to do it with uh, sensory bottles. You can use some of the rice that you made for your rice hunt. Maybe you dump it in there at the end of the week. And then you have it for a long time. It lasts almost forever. Um, I don't like to waste food. So I understand if you don't want to do a rice hunt due to the food waste, that's understandable. I do usually when I make a sensory bottle, it lasts um, a really long time. I, I had some I threw out at 10 years. Um, that might be a bit excessive. But when you make a sensory bottle, you want to put in, like you can put in just colored water and a little bit of vegetable oil or another oil. You can put in a tiny bit of glitter. This is the only application in which I will tell you to use glitter, probably. Um, but you can put in a little bit of glitter. You can put in some beads. You can put in something else that you have. If you're doing the rice one, you can put in some of that stuff too. And then when they are doing the hunt, if you have like beads, you can almost make it an I spy game. Um, I'm talking a lot and very quickly and I'm sorry, but if you are looking for some sensory bottle ideas, there are probably 5 million online that you could find. Um, my favorite is the simplest, just oil and water. Um, do make sure that you hot glue the lids on. Uh, that is a pro tip because you don't want the kiddos eating it or pulling the lid off and getting whatever you put inside all over the place. All right, another idea is a paint mixing bag. So you can use a baggie if you have one around that maybe you've already used for something else. Put a little bit of paint of, of two different colors and put it into the corners. So do like a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow or a little bit of yellow and a little bit of blue or red and blue. And I would just stick with primary colors if you are still working on those. Um, and then have your beloved child go ahead and smush the paint all around in that bag. Make sure you seal it really tight. I should have mentioned that too. All right, have them squish it all in the bag and see the color mix. We also like to do this as a window activity. So if you have any like tall windows in your house that you can tape the paint bag up toward the bottom, it's a really fun way to have your kid play with it. They can play with the opacity of the paint, like how much of the light is coming through, um, which is also a really fun science concept for them to start exploring. Um, and then they can also, you know, feel around for how much color goes in, you know, how you mix it. Another thing, once they have all the paint mixed together, is that you can keep the bag hanging on the window or put it on a table. Uh, tape it on both ends, like top and bottom, so that it stays in place. And then you can practice your writing on it. So they can practice writing on it with their finger, or you can use a Q-tip and move the paint out of the way. And then whatever surface is behind it will show through and you'll be able to see uh, the letters that they're working on. And then to erase, they just go with their hand and start all over. Um, so get lots of mileage out of the paint mixing bag. That's another one where if you put in, you know, five seconds to put it together, you'll get a lot of time out of it. All right, the last idea I had um, requires goggles. Not really, I just really like to make the kiddos wear goggles because they make for really cute pictures because um, they just look like such serious scientists. And really, anytime we're exploring and learning through play, they are being serious scientists. It just might not necessarily look like it. So once they have the goggles on, boom, serious scientist. Um, they don't actually need these. If you don't have them, it's okay. I just like to use them. All right, um, the last idea I had was to do some sort of color experimenting. You can use the idea where you put some milk in a bowl 
and then put a couple drops of color around and then I think you put in just a tiny squirt of dish soap um, so you can use that one you can definitely find instructions online or if you just want to use some color like food coloring and water I would just do we do this regularly here and it is a delightful mess they get water everywhere so maybe wait until it's warm enough to do this outside or if you're going to do it inside if you have any baking trays that you can do it inside of save yourself a little bit of effort um, so we love to use this one is broken and somehow it is always my volunteer do you see the stuff that's dried paint from years ago um, but it's always the one that I end up picking up um, so if you have eyedroppers it doesn't have to look like this if you happen to have any extra like syringes from medicine that could work too um, if you have any extra eyedroppers from medicine that would be amazing if you want to buy eyedroppers they are relatively inexpensive if you buy like smaller giant chunks of them um, but I have really gotten a lot of use out of these they came with this set actually um, so I would put maybe red and yellow into this and then I have a big one but you don't need to have all this stuff you can just do it in different containers uh, but I have a big one that I have them squirted into and then once they get all of these out of here and into here it mixes together the colors and then they get to see what color it makes if you don't have the eyedroppers or you're not as worried about working on these skills because I'm hitting them hard this week aren't I um, you can just work on dumping and pouring too so dumping and pouring with uh, color water still super fun so I would just again stick with primary colors probably because once we start mixing the secondary colors we end up getting a whole lot of brown yeah all right so hopefully that gives you some really fun ideas I really try to keep it to things that don't take a huge amount of investment and in time up front but give you as much time as possible with your child exploring and learning so hopefully a lot of these will buy you a little bit of time to I don't know watch a TV show for five seconds all right I hope that this has all been helpful um, I really hope that you have lots of fun exploring and playing with your little one good luck caregivers we miss seeing you hopefully we'll get to see you for programming soon if not we are open for you to come in and browse at the library if you feel safe and comfortable doing that all right see you soon bye